Hello everyone, I'm Maria and welcome or welcome back to my nook. Also, happy Halloween! <laughs> I have little ghosts on my head. I <laughs> am honestly so proud I managed to put these there. They were a little too far back on my head. I am now realizing, so you probably won't be able to see them most of the time. But they're there and they're very cute. <laughs> anyway, this video will be about all the books I have read in September and October. So without further ado, let's jump right in. The first book I finished in September is Booked on a Feeling by J.C. Lee. I actually read most of this book in August, but I ended up finishing it in September. So I'm including it in this video. Booked on a Feeling is about Lizzie, who's a lawyer, and she's in the process of climbing that career ladder, trying very hard to make partners. She's very ambitious about it until on her biggest case so far, she has a panic attack in court and faints, which makes her realize that she needs a break and needs to take some time off from her job. She does that in the little town where her best friend of 20 years, Jack, lives and where she used to spend all her summers as a kid. Now she goes there for a little vacation and she decides to help an indie bookstore owner kind of rebuild her bookstore and she does that with the help of her best friend and they fall in love. <laughs> it's friends to lovers. Honestly, I don't usually read that much friends to lovers. Normally when I read something to lovers, it's enemies to lovers, not that much friends to lovers. The friendship of these two was really cute and their romance was really cute and sweet and wholesome too. I really liked Lizzie and Jack as well. The book was dual POV. What kind of bothered me about that was that the dual POV was never actually indicated, so it never said Jack or Lizzie. It always just switched. <laughs> so whenever the POV switched at the beginning of a chapter or like after a time jump or a setting change, I just had to figure out a new within the first few sentences whose POV this is now written from or whether the POV changed at all. That kind of, I feel like, took away a bit from my reading experience because I had to put more work in to figure this out. And I mean, usually I'm fine with putting work in. I mean, I read fantasy books and I read mystery books where I obviously have to put some brain work in. <laughs> but with romance books, I kind of just wanna enjoy them, you know? So that kind of bothered me. And the nature of Lizzie's and Jack's friendship kind of confused me sometimes too, because there were things that they didn't know about each other, where I thought, if you guys have been friends for literally two decades, 20 years, shouldn't you know this about each other? It wasn't a bad book, per se. It was perfectly fine. I did kind of enjoy it. Oh, and the romance was open door, by the way. I really liked the indie bookstore setting. It maybe just wasn't exactly what I needed. So I think I'm giving it 3.5 stars. Let's move on to a book that was exactly what I needed. And that is Love on the Brain by Ellie Hazelwood. First book I ever tapped. Never did that before this book. <laughs> Honestly, once again, Ellie Hazelwood just did it for me with this book. I think I mentioned this before, but she's just one of my favorite authors, an autobi author for me. 
there's just something about her writing style that I just click with. I can't really explain it. <laughs> I love the main characters, B and Levi. I loved the sign setting because I'm a nerd. <laughs> Love on the Brain is about B, who is able to work with NASA on a project. The only problem is that her nemesis, Levi, is also working on that project. And that's a problem. <laughs> so this book is Enemies to Lovers. And the romance part is open door, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it's very open door. <laughs> I love their dynamics. I didn't really love the pretty stereotypical turn at the end, but I mean, most romance books follow very similar tropes and structures, so it's fine. <laughs> I really did enjoy this book. I had such a good time reading it. It made me laugh out loud. So I'm giving it five stars easily. <laughs> and which book I'm giving five stars to is Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. Lainey Taylor's writing style is just breathtaking. It's magnificent. This entire book was so magical. It's basically about Laszlo Strange, who is obsessed with this lost city of Weep. And one day he gets the opportunity to actually go to the lost city of Weep. And there's a lot of secrets, a lot of things to find out. And this book was honestly fantastic. I loved everything about this book. I loved the characters, some more than others, obviously, but all of them were so well written. The story was amazing. The world building was just gorgeous. And again, the writing style, breathtaking, just breathtaking. One of my favorite fantasy books ever now, probably. <laughs> and the romance part is closed door, by the way. Now, after Strange the Dreamer, I also really enjoyed the sequel, which is Muse of Nightmares by Lainey Taylor. And again, her writing style, simply magical. In Muse of Nightmares, the characters basically have to navigate the world after the events of Strange the Dreamer and they have to try to save themselves and their loved ones and stuff. I think that's probably all I can say without spoiling Strange the Dreamer for you. <laughs> Both of these books were an enchanted dream from start to finish. It was... I can't even properly put it into words. Like, it's been weeks since I read these books, but I still cannot properly form coherent thoughts about these books because I'm just so taken aback by what Lainey Taylor built with these stories. The characters are so well written. I love the character development, the character dynamics, the friendships, the romances. Again, their closed door. The world building is immaculate. I am in awe of what Lainey Taylor created there. And her writing style, I can't stop talking about it. I literally cannot stop talking about her writing style. It's just so amazing. I could never. I could never. I enjoyed these books so much. I had such a good time reading them and I'm giving both of them five stars, this one too. Again, this as well, one of my favorite fantasy books now. <laughs> After that, I did take a tiny bit of a break from huge, full novels, because I was just so obsessed with those two books that I just felt like I can start a new book right away because nothing will compare to these two. So I read a book that I was given by a friend and that is Die Wahrheit über Sherlock Holmes. I believe that the English version of this book is called 
Moriarty's papers, but the literal translation would be the truth about Sherlock Holmes. And then there's a subtitle that says from the documents of his arch nemesis put together by Colonel S. Moran. This is basically just, whoops, <laughs> just a small booklet in which a fictitious publisher put together found documents that Sebastian Moran published for lack of money and those documents were originally by James Moriarty. <laughs> Their protocols, diary entries, collages, drawings of machines and experiments and all that kind of stuff. They are not put in any kind of chronolo chro chronological order. <laughs> I mean, a tiny bit, but not really. And it doesn't really follow any kind of storyline. It does give a nice sort of extra insight on a lot of Sherlock Holmes cases if you've read those and it also gives a nice insight into the thoughts and kind of feelings of James Moriarty. I have a bit of mixed feelings about the portrayal of James Moriarty in this book but other than that it was a really good time just going through this book and reading through it it's really nicely designed and very well illustrated and all that. It was a really good time, so I think I'm giving it four stars, if I'm giving it a rating. <laughs> now after that, I started reading the Inheritance Game series. And I know this series got a lot of hype quite a while ago already, and the third book in the trilogy just came out recently. Like, not that recently anymore, <laughs> but it came in the mail a little bit belated for me, sadly. And I wanted to wait until I had the third book on hand before I started reading the books, so I could read them back to back to back. And I'm really happy I did that, because otherwise I would have probably gotten a bit confused with all the characters and connections and relationships and all that. So the Inheritance Games is basically about Avery, who is just a normal teenager. She just recently lost her mom and she doesn't have a lot of money. But all of a sudden she finds out that this billionaire left her his entire fortune and he left his family he does have a family he left them barely anything so now she's trying to figure out why why she what happened what else is there to know and there's a lot of riddles and puzzles and games and a bit of romance too i must say i wasn't really invested in the romance in this book, which is not the fault of the book, I have to say, because I wasn't here for the romance. I was here for the mystery. This book had already existed on my TBR for a long while before I even found out that there is a romance in this book. And it is a love triangle, and I am not a fan of love triangles which is probably an unpopular opinion, but I'm not a fan of love triangles. And I was kind of bummed out when I found out about that, but I still really wanted to read these books for the mystery, so I kind of just... The romance was just there for me. <laughs> I wasn't bored by it though, and that's a very positive point for this book, that it didn't have me bored by something that I wasn't really interested in. That's pretty good actually. <laughs> but I did really enjoy this book. The mysteries were pretty cool. The puzzles were fairly satisfying. I was often a little bit ahead of the narrative. By little bit I mean literally like maybe half a page or like two pages so it wasn't that big of achievements usually. <laughs> but 
therefore I did spoil some of the surprises for myself, but that's fine. I still really enjoyed this book. The romance is closed door, by the way. I think, honestly, that's all there is to say. I'm giving it four stars. Now, after that, obviously, I read the second book, which is The Hawthorne Legacy by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. I'm not sure if I even mentioned the author for the first book, but it's the same author for all three books. <laughs> this one, also mystery, a little bit of romance, again, closed door, because I think these books are all YA. On the other hand, I think that does not equal closed door romance. Anyway, <laughs> this book is basically set right after the events of the first book. And the first book ended with a cliffhanger about another puzzle that has presented itself to the characters and they're trying to solve that one in this book. I really enjoyed this book as well. I think I enjoyed it a tiny bit less than the first book. I honestly can't even properly explain it. There were one or two things where I thought that ugh, this is kind of random. And there was one thing especially that was a huge thing. In the first book already it was a huge thing that they were trying to figure out and then it was revealed and it was relying on a pretty random event and that was kind of disappointing but oh well i still enjoyed this book and i think i'm giving it 3.8 stars next up we have the third book in the trilogy the Final Gambit by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. <laughs> now, this book is set, I think, nine or ten months after the events of the second book. A lot has happened since then. When I started reading this book, I realized that I was, by now, really attached to these characters and, like, fairly invested in their lives and their story. <laughs> And I wasn't 100% here for only the mystery anymore. I was also into the romance now by this book, which was probably also because the nature of the romance had changed a little bit by this book. I hope I can say that much without spoiling anything. I probably can. But yeah, in this book, there's another huge thing happening and the stakes in this book were much higher, I felt like. And I also felt like this thing that I had with the first two books, where I was often a tiny bit ahead of the narrative, decreased in this book. Which meant that there were much more surprises for me and shocks. And I was more often tripped by the rebuilds and the turns and twists that the story took, which was obviously cool and it kept me more on the edge of my seat than the other two books. I, at least I felt like it did. And I really liked that in this book, the main character actually outsmarted people all by herself. So that was really cool and I really enjoyed this book. I think even more than the first book. So I think I'm giving it four and a half stars. So all in all, I really enjoyed these books, which was so cool. I was a bit scared I wouldn't because there's so much hype around these books, but I did. And also these books are gorgeous. I just had to mention that. Oh, and by the way, this is also closed door, first. And second, I did an entire vlog about reading this book. And I shared a few more opinions about this book in that vlog, obviously. Which is probably coming out like two weeks from now, if you're watching the video when it comes out. So maybe go check that one out once it's live. 
if you want to know more about how my reading experience with this book was. Those were all the books I read in September and October. Those were two pretty good reading months. I had some really nice books on my hands that I really enjoyed. I also hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, maybe give it a thumbs up and perhaps subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of my videos in the future. Maybe tell me in the comments which books you've read in September and October and perhaps let me know which one was your favorite that you read in the last two months. Other than that, I will see you guys somewhere else on the internet. Bye!